I just also want you to comment that the Buddha says so many things are not self. Your body is not yourself, your feelings, perceptions, your thoughts, your consciousness, eye, ears, nose, tongue, body, mind. But he said, there is that phrase, Kama Sagomi, I am the owner of my actions. Your actions are yours. You're responsible for them. Without you, those actions wouldn't have happened. They're your real treasure. So you want to make sure that they are treasures. It's like packing to go on a trip. When you get to your destination, you want to open up the suitcase and find that you have useful things inside. Not just bits of string and garbage and dirty laundry. You want to have nice, clean things that you can use. So think about that every time you make a decision as what to do or to say or to think, that you're going to be carrying this around with you. As long as you're carrying things around, carry around things that are going to be useful. Otherwise, you get weighed down. The Buddha's image is of a cart being drawn by an ox. And as the ox pulls the cart along, the wheels of the cart crush the footprints of the ox. And of course, it's heavy. As for the good things you do, the things you do with a bright, clear mind, knowing that they're skillful, those, he said, are like a shadow. They follow you and they don't crush anything at all, and they don't weigh you down. When you're out in the sun, your shadow doesn't weigh anything on you. When you come back in and the shadow disappears, you don't notice any difference in the weight. So as you go through life, this is what you've got to think about. What are you gathering up and putting in your knapsack? What are you gathering up and putting in your suitcase? As with any trip, you want to make sure that you're gathering up only good things, taking only good things, things that will be useful. That's where you should focus your attention. For example, when you're doing concentration, you don't just say, okay, my concentration is inconstant, stressful, therefore it's beyond my control, I'm just going to give up. Or just learn how to be patient with it and pretend that that's okay. I mean, sometimes you do have to be patient in the meditation, but you don't, you're not patient just to be there. You're patient so you can watch what's actually going on. But as John Lee would say, you take what's inconstant in your mind and you try to make it constant. The things in the body that are uncomfortable, you try to make them comfortable by the way you breathe. And the mind that is so much out of your control, you try to bring it under your control so you can think the thoughts you want to think and don't have to think the thoughts you don't want to think. So we look into things that are in constant stressful, not self, and we find that there are opportunities for us to do something that is constant, easeful, and under our control. Eventually, of course, you have to let go of both sides. But in the meantime, make use of the things that you can gain some control over. There's so little in the world that we can control. You look at the news every morning and it's, it's pretty depressing. And if you focus on things that you can't change, then you feel hopeless. But if you realize that there are things in my life that I can change, and beginning with your intentions and working out from there, then you find that you have something really good to hold on to, something worth holding on to, something worth putting in your bag, putting in your suitcase, something you'll be glad that you packed when you get to the other side.